Hello and welcome back to Dulce Aroma. My name is Manuela and for today's soap we will be making a sexy wild man cold process soap. The soap is fantastic. It is a very popular soap for us. Um, we found our family members to absolutely love the soap. Um, my boyfriend, my brother, my cousin, my dad, everybody loves, loves the soap and it's definitely their favorites. I think the title is quite exciting and definitely makes it quite intriguing. If you are new to the soap making process, you might not be aware of Sexy Wild Man, but it is actually a soap that is quite common in the soap making community. There's lots of different interpretations, but I think that what makes it um, I guess the distinct sexy wild man is the combination of fragrances which is cinnamon, sandalwood and uh, lemongrass. Those three fragrances smell so incredible together and are you know really loved by men but I personally love using the soap as well. Before making any saponification or soap making process you need to make sure that you have all the safety equipment necessary. It is essential um, as lye or sodium hydroxide can be dangerous if it comes into contact with your skin or with your eyes. Try and keep it away from your skin and your eyes of course. Uh, have plenty of ventilation. Use a face mask, safety glasses and safety gloves. If you can also have long sleeves that's even better. And just make sure to follow all of the safety instructions of the ingredients and the uh, tools that you are using throughout this process. I don't want to scare anyone. Soap making is very fun and a really awesome thing to do. But as long as you do it cautiously, you know, that's always what you have to make it, make sure that you do. Just make sure that everything is done safely and you will have a great time. Um, but yeah, I highly, highly recommend if you haven't tried cold making or hot process, sorry, of making of soap, definitely do try it. Don't let lye scare you, but if you're going to try it, be cautious. That's all. All right. To begin this project, let's have a look at the ingredients. We will be needing 736 grams of olive oil, 74 grams of castor oil, 583 grams of sweet almond oil, 405 grams of distilled water, 181 grams of sodium hydroxide, 15 grams each of brown, black, yellow or orange, and white mica powder, 42 grams of sandalwood fragrance, 28 grams of natural cinnamon fragrance and 10 grams of lemongrass fragrance. The total batch should be about um, 1,400 grams in total. So hopefully that will help you find the right mold for your project. Okay, so the first process is to weigh up our lye crystals. We're doing this outside. We also weigh up our distilled water and we add our lye crystals to the water. This will heat up quite a lot. Be careful, please, and make sure that you set it aside to cool down. While you're waiting for that to cool down, heat up your oils to just around 40 degrees, a little bit below if you can, about 30, between 35 to 40 degrees Celsius, no higher than that, as that can evaporate some of the properties that we want in our oil. And once they have reached your lye solution and your oils have reached a similar temperature, you can now pour your lye solution into your oil. As you can see, we use a little sieve just to make sure that none of the crystals go through, although the mixture is quite well mixed. Uh, just, yeah, just be really cautious. And we are also pouring the lye mix over a spatula just to avoid uh, causing bubbles when the two reach each other. Awesome, so we start mixing it a little bit by hand and then grab our stick blender just to start the saponification process. That cloudiness that you can see in the middle is the saponification reaction happening there. And that is the soap making. For this particular project, we don't want to over blend it. We don't want the mix to be too thick. Um, I added a little bit of salt to this mix as well, just to make sure that it was extra hard, um, but that's completely optional. It's about a teaspoon. Now we are going to be dividing the mixture up into four jugs. I have three, but I will grab another one soon. Um, and each one of those jugs is gonna be a different color. If you want them to be the exact quantities, you know, equal quantities of each color, make sure that you weigh up your main, um, your total batch and then divide it by four and then make sure that each jug weighs that amount. We wanted to just eyeball it. So um, it's gonna be not 
exactly perfect but that's totally fine you know we we like to be really creative and and enjoy the process not always be incredibly calculated and this is something that you don't have to be super calculated on <laughs> which color has more you know that's totally fine okay so here we're adding this gorgeous orangey yellow mica powder to our mix you can um, dilute these before or um, Put a little bit of mica powder into some of your oil mix and mix it up first if you want to. That will ensure that there are no little grains of mica throughout your soap if you're wanting it to be very well mixed in. Um, now we've got the black in and the brown as well. If you don't have black mica powder, a good substitute is activated charcoal. And if you don't have an orange or a yellow color, a good substitute for that is turmeric. Both have really great properties for the skin as well, so they're not only a great substitute in terms of color, but they are also really great for your skin. The only thing to note is the activated charcoal won't be black, it will be, um, I guess, a charcoal color <laughs> or a dark gray. So if you're wanting it to be black, make sure that you find a mica powder, as activated charcoal probably won't reach black, complete blackness. All right, so give them a good mix. We're mixing them by hand as we don't want to be using the stick blender too much. We don't want to over mix it as we're going to be pouring these colors together and we want them to be able to move freely within the mold to have that um, swirly appearance. So once you've mixed it with a spoon, give it a little mix with a blender. But again, like I said, please don't over mix it as it will make it harder to pour in. The mica powder and the fragrance tend to speed up the trace or the consistency thickening up. So just um, it's better to go for a more liquid consistency as obviously you can always go thicker, but you can't go runnier after you've been, you know, mixing it a lot. The consistency that we're going for here is like uh, if you are familiar with custard, <laughs> a runny custard, not too thick, not too thin. And now we're adding our fragrances. I recommend to use a little dropper if you can, just to be a little bit more exact with your quantities. But again, it's totally up to you how you do this. Now we're mixing it in with a spatula. And our soap is almost ready to start pouring into our molds. So make sure that you've prepared your mold ahead of time. Or if you have someone helping you, of course, they can start doing it in this time. We are using this gorgeous wooden box that we have. I personally love this mold. I think it makes a really cool size. It's a bamboo box, but we have um, coated it in baking paper. Unfortunately, it didn't adhere very well as I used um, a tape, but the mold had a little bit of oil on it. So another thing you can use to really hold the baking paper in place are small clothing pegs that holds it down quite well as well. And now this filling process takes a wee while, so you have to be patient. Uh, the way we did it is we just did one line of each color and then just alternated between. Some of the lines were a little bit thicker than the others, but we want it to look very rustic, so that's totally fine for us. Cool. The more you pour, the more you realize you know, that it, it is thickening, so you don't want to take too long doing this, especially if you've mixed it a little bit on the you know, over mixed it a little bit. We mixed it probably a little bit more than we would have liked, but that's fine. It's still gonna look awesome. And after we have poured it all in, we're going to grab a skewer and we're going to move the colors around so that they're more of a swirl instead of just layers. I think that the soap resembles a tiger print or um, a bit of a tree grain as well, I guess. It can resemble that. The colors, I think, look so cool together. If you're going to make a swirl type of pattern, I recommend that you make sure to use colors with a high contrast so that are quite different because often the colors can get lost in each other. So this is a really good combination of colors, in my opinion, for a swirl um, appearance. Oh, and to complete it, we're doing a little curly swirl on the top 
Don't over swirl as the colors will start mixing if you do. So yeah, it's so hard to stop when you've started because it's so satisfying swirling all these colors together, but just make sure that you don't over mix them. We like to store our freshly made soap in a cardboard box wrapped up in a towel as we have kids and pets in the house so we find this to look, be a little bit more secure and then we put it up on a shelf. So we have our, our box with a towel ready. We tap down our moulds as well just to make sure that there aren't bubbles inside the mixture. Amazing, I'm so happy with how the soap is turning out. Cool, so as you can see, we've, we've lined our box with a towel, and then to top it off, we're putting a drying rack on top. You can get these at a, where you can get any baking needs. Uh, here in New Zealand, you can find these in the grocery store. Okay, so we're wrapping it up in a towel, and here we are 24 hours later. Please, uh, a little note is that the soap will not be able to be used for four to six weeks as it needs to cure, just to make sure that it's reached the right pH for skin. Um, obviously the lye solution has to evaporate out of there or the water, um, so it will be a waiting time of about four to six weeks, but this is definitely worth it. If you're here in New Zealand, I think you might just be in time to make this for Father's Day. Father's Day is next month here. Gorgeous, I love the soap. I love the little speckles as well of the mica not being fully mixed in. That definitely ha happens if you um, put in a teaspoon of the powder straight into the mix. If you don't want that to happen, like I said before, make sure to mix that into a little bit of oil ahead of time before you pour it in. This bar is so cool. Every single slice that you cut out of it is gonna be completely unique to the previous one, which I think, I don't know, I think that's, that's part of the beauty of um, of the swirl and part of the beauty of artisanal or artisanal soaps is just how every single soap is gonna be completely different to the, the next one. We like to make sure that all of our slices are around about the same weight just because we sell our bars of soap. Um, to do this, you just need to make sure, it's all really to do with weight and you just uh, have to divide the whole block by the amount of um, slices that you want and just make sure that they each weigh about the same amount. If you have any thin slices left over, you can always give those away as free samples to customers or again to friends. Some I've seen some soap companies um, wrap up really thin slices as sample packs, which I think is pretty neat. Cool, and as you can see, this is the final project. It looks very tiger print, very organic, really beautiful. The colors are so lovely. I love this soap. And we keep getting so many compliments from customers and family and friends that use this soap. It's definitely a big favorite of ours and we will definitely be making the soap again. We love it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Manuela and I make these videos with my mother here in New Zealand. We both love making soap videos together. We hope that you enjoy our videos. If you'd like to see more from us, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. We upload videos weekly of cold process, hot process, melt and pour, and lots of other different projects as well. Please let us know in the comments if there's anything that you would like to see in particular from us. We are working really hard at uh, designing new projects and coming up with different ideas to share with you. If you are looking for any tips, let us know in the comments as well. Like our videos, share our videos with your friends, and hopefully uh, you will be joining us next week for the newest video. Have a beautiful day and we will see you very soon. Bye bye.